motherfuckers. He's the only viable man. He's the only viable man. The oh oh <coughs> ah. oh hey, I, I didn't expect you to come this early. Uh, wait, what? Did I mention something about the elephants? Nah, man, silly you. I don't have mammoths in my country, but I know a place that literally has mammoth in its name. Welcome to Mammoth Fortress. Two big maps with big blast zones, a moving platform that goes from left to right or vice versa, and these ones also go down to the stage level instead of floating, and the only difference in them is their stage size and wall size, hence why one of them is called Small Mammoth Fortress. If you've been playing this game for quite a while now, this map has been burned into your eyes forever. Or it's a common pick if you've been catching up with the recent tournaments. <laughs> but why this map? And why the fuck every NA set that I watch has at least two matches be played on Mammoth Fortress? Per set. What about the other maps? What's wrong with them? Well, we have a lot of maps to cover. And since my lust for blood is really high, I'll cover only the tournament legal ones. And the ones that are not so casual. Just like the free for all ones. Let's go in order. Or at least the order that's on training mode. Why is it called Brawl Haven? I have no idea. Probably because it certainly looks like one of the highest places in Valhalla, and where the most of its peace seeking characters go to reflect and reach inner peace. And it's also the place where the scariest of matches occur. Due to its limited space and small blast zones, it wouldn't surprise me to see someone dying at zero because they got hit by a GCN second Yumiko's hammer. This map is all about gimmicks and small details. Even if it looks so simple, glass cannon characters are either in a disadvantage or advantage. They can die way earlier than half of the cast, but they also kill tanky characters early. So depending on your playstyle, you kinda have to play willing to give out at least one risk. Okay, this is a little, you know, uh, uh, off of the, the script, but in popular opinion, this is my favorite map to play on Train On. Enigma the Steampunk City is the bane of many of your rank sessions. With the size same as Brawlhaven, but no slopes on the walls, a slightly bigger blast zone, this map will be a much better Brawlhaven if it wasn't for the platforms. The most basic platform design for a platform fighter, two low platforms and one of the top, and now, don't take me wrong, this type of layout is a must for this type of games. But in Brawlhalla, there's always gonna be a bud. There's always gonna be an exception to the rule. Some weapons get massive control over the stage and big boosts on their combo kit, while others struggle in some extent to even reach those platforms. But I'm gonna talk about those in a second. Let's move on to the next map. And now, how do I say this? Ugh. This map fucking sucks. And I get it. It's the place where kids play hide and seek, where the big legends get to meet each other. It's supposed to be the center of Valhalla, and don't quote me on that one actually, I'm just saying it because how it looks, and the, and the name of course. But instead, it's the center of complaints from many players, including me. We have about the same layout as Small Enigma, with two low platforms being a little off on the stage, and the top platform. It's just another stage, and it gets worse in twos, this, this shit just yes. It gets bigger. They really nailed it when they added the grate to the hall. But let me explain why this map sucks. Aside of having all of those platform shenanigans, this map is huge in every sense of the word. And that also means huge on the blast zones, meaning that some characters are gonna have trouble killing with some weapons, and some characters are gonna survive to pretty much 200% on every stock, because of their defense and whatnot. It's already hard to play against someone who's willing to go to timeout, and this map enhances that suffering. And now this. This is a good map. Or is it? There's certainly no seed to conquer in the afterlife, but this place, this is the closest some pirate legends will get. A counterpart to Brawlhaven, this map is big, big blast zones and a big runway as a stage but maybe a little too big for 1v1s. 
This and the lack of big walls to make up for a map that's certainly good for on-stage gameplay, but really risky on the off-stage, since legends like Scarlet and Rayman have 6 that cover the entire wall in one swing. Oh yeah, yeah, <clears throat> do you hear that? No, that's the sound of an actual good map. The place where the craziest robotic revolution happened. It's only the serving of a stage up to its standards, an average wall size, last zones just like Enigma, two upper platforms, and a mechanic that restrains you from going below the stage. This is the stage where I heard the least amount of complaints over a year. No crazy platform charging like in other stages, the perfect site for ones and twos, and it also has a banger of a soundtrack. Like, just listen to it. Mmm, <clears throat> gets me going every time. Okay, let me be the first one to say it in a video. The first battle pass was kind of a meme for me. And you know, the thought of having a battle pass on Brawlhalla was already hilarious. But as, you know, time went on, I learned to love the battle pass. The battle passes, actually, and the effort they put into them. Plus, they add new stuff to the game, so that's always good. Demon Island is the counterpart of a counterpart. And you know, the boys and girls at BMG didn't disappoint. And now we have a wonderful flat map for once. Big stage size, big upper blast zones, but we still have those, you know, tiny walls. But hey, we can't ask for much. Since the Mammoth Fortress formula was good, that it made the map the most common pick in tournaments, why not repeat it again? There's not a lot to talk about this map. It's literally a copy of Mammoth Fortress, but the platforms don't go to the stage level, and the walls have little slopes on the corners, you know, to make it tricky to get a wall touch. And that, that's about it, I guess. I'm gonna say it right away, I like the previous soundtrack this map had, but aside of that, this map is also a pain for some people, mainly because of the platform placement. Just like Miami Dome, it only has two platforms, but this one are on the lower side compared to Miami's, so that allows for some weapons to get some massive combo boost. The map itself has a big ceiling and average side blast zones, and it also has those goddamn slopes on the wall. But you know, it's, it's okay, it's okay. And okay, those maps are on the competitive side, but what about the quote-unquote friendly maps? And before you get your sweaty gamer talk on my face, I don't mean the free-for-all maps. I'm talking about the friendly 1s and friendly 2s map. The biggest tree in Valhalla hides plenty of secrets. Some of them have yet to be unraveled. And it also hides the most single, cheesiest talks of the entire Valhalla pro scene. And yes, I'm talking about the Remy Ethan set. Boy oh boy this map is big for no reason. I love the platform layout, but the tiny piece of rock on the right side is just... Why? This map has already big blast zones, and the piece of rock on the right side is close to one, so I guess that kinda makes up for such a big space where it just fails on doing so. It just makes the map bigger. And yes, I, I skipped King's Pass, because that map, even on its small form, it's big as hell. But heading over Thunderguard, this place is a whole stadium, where every legend gets on a daily brawling to see who's the current powerhouse on, the, on Valhalla. The map has big upper and side blast zones, and it's also quite large on the actual stage, but the main catch of this map is right there where the action begins. Instead of having a full flat arena, this map is built of two chunks of stadium parts, and a platform that connects those two parts, leaving a place in the middle that's the bane of every Qatar player. The fact that it's a platform makes it so certain combos and moves just drop right in the middle. Plus, it enhances sharking on another level, making it so you have more options to go under the stage and recover. To be a pretty obscure and creepy map, I did not expect Core of All Legends to have much interaction with it. Big side blast zones, a platform layout that, that in my opinion is interesting, one big platform on the top and a vertical moving platform on the left side. The size of the stage itself, you know, the chunk, the big chunk of rock, uh, the, you know, the stage, is just as tiny as Brawlhaven. This map would be really good as a legal stage if it wasn't for the left platform, 
while it's interesting for the movement pattern that it provides, the blast zone nearby make it so it just looks like another part of the stage. Thus, it creates a false sensation of playing on a big stage. This map is most certainly the weirdest map of all. It has a ceiling on the middle of the stage. The upper blast zones are not big at all if, you, if we actually think about it. It has Miami Dome's mechanic that doesn't allow the player to go under the stage, and the stage itself is not the biggest by all means. But the big center of attention is definitely that ceiling. It allows so many weapons to have extra options when it comes to comboing, but it also gives the player another chance of life, making some of your vanilla combos actually not viable at all. Okay, quote me however you like. But this map, this map right here, this map banks as big as APOC or Demon Island, but it has a big platform on the middle of the stage. The walls are not actually the smallest by all means, but they're also not the biggest. So why is this map not tournament viable? Like, I actually want to know. Is it because of the platform placement? Maybe the map is a little too big? Like, please, someone tell me, because in my opinion, this map is good. Okay, okay, it's hero time, everybody. And honestly, this map is kinda boring. And interesting at the same time, just like Ben 10's reboot, in my opinion. It has yet another big ceiling. Average side blast zones. But the map itself is just big. And the platform pattern makes it even worse. Though, it's still interesting. We have two platforms on the lower side, both on the left and right side, respectively. And these platforms go outside of the stage and inside, but not completely in the middle like Mammoth. It also has Miami's regarding the understage block, and it also has those damn slopes. And last but not least, we have the Spirit Realm. The Spirit Realm. The Spirit Realm. I don't know. And if I'm being completely honest, this map is just like Golden Prime, but like the platforms don't move. And thank god the walls don't have any slopes on the side. But other than that, it just feels like another copy of a previous map, which is kinda sad actually. We have a lot of maps and a lot of complaints to try and fix, so let's go slowly. Charking is a big part of Valhalla, and it's not entirely a bad thing. But when it happens 24-7, it becomes another pain in the ass that everyone doesn't want to have. In my opinion, wall jumps should have progressive loss on height. For example, after the 15th wall jump, for example, the player should have their remaining wall jumps have less height. So they either get into the stage or continue wall jumping until their jumps are basically non-existent. Every casual 1s and 2s map can be easily legal if we adjust the blast zones. But some of them, even the legal ones, need some sort of tweak to make them fair and balanced. On Twilight Grove, we can make the blast zones way smaller, and have the right side rock only be used as a combo tool. This means that you can't either wall jump or land on it. Fang while ceiling can be still used, you know, legally, if we make it so the ceiling breaks after certain hits. So if you throw your opponent upwards, you know, let's say at uh, 130%, the ceiling breaks and you get a KO instead of a bounce. Black Card Keep can have its blast zones, you know, reduce a little bit. And, si and since Cord moves the platforms on that map, we can make it so the left platform disappears after standing on it for a long period of time. Even if Cord is rock solid, he also gets tired, you know? Every city gets messed up after a revolution. And that can also be the case on Miami Dome. Those two platforms can disappear and reappear after a short period of time. Every 30 seconds, for example. A nice little, you know, electricity outage as a design will make it fit into the map. And as much as it hurts me... <laughs> okay. The only thing I'd change from Great Hall is probably make it so the top platform is not as wide. And reduce a little bit, just just a tiny bit, the uh, glass zones. But that's it. I know, I'm a criminal. I know. And pretty much all the remaining maps only need either a minor tweak 
or a resize on their blast zones, in my opinion. And that's pretty much it for the changes. I know I didn't say anything about platforms themselves, aside of you know just changing their just changing their place on certain stages. And the reason why is that platforms are quite a topic to talk about. BMG has been trying to change them for the past patches, but sadly it did not make it live. And I personally, I like the platform mechanics. Dashing on them, platform cancelling downward moves, and it will always make it so we have more options to go for. And that's why I don't want to mess with them to any extent. Though, I know some people hate some stuff regarding the platforms. So if you have anything, any complaints or any ideas, uh, let me know, please. And as always, thank you for watching.